Hello everyone, my name is Colette and you are watching Classy Herbs. Okay, so sorry I didn't make my video last week. That was because last weekend we were getting this little girl here. This is a new chocolate lab puppy. Her name is Charlie. Yeah. So we got her last weekend, and so I didn't really have time. And I've had her all week, so it's been a busy week. But that is just a quick explanation of why I didn't have a video last week. All right, so today I want to talk about the differences of snakes. Like, what's the differences between, you hear people talking about colubrids, boas, pythons, you know, on then on and on and on, all about the different species and subspecies. So I'm gonna to try to my best to explain that a little bit. Okay, so today we're gonna to be breaking down the classification of serpentes, also known as snakes. Under serpentes, or snakes, there's three super families. The first one is Typhlopodia and then Henothidia, and then Exenothidia. Sorry about the mispronunciation, but those are the three main superfamilies. Under the first family of Typhlopodia, there are just a few not well-known snakes, so I'm not going to talk about them much, but they're mainly the blind snakes. It's good to recognize that they are there. Then there are ten smaller families under the second superfamily of Henothidia, and under them are the Boidae family, which has become wildly popular, and that's kind of what I'm going to be talking about today, because I want to keep things relative to you guys. So we're going to talk about the Boidae family a lot. And there are six families under the superfamily of Exenophidia, and under those are the Colubridae family, which are also pretty popular, so we'll talk about them a bit too. Now getting to where most people actually talk about under the Boidae group of snakes, it breaks into kind of two subspecies that most people usually think of as two separate ones. There's the pythons, and then there's the boas. First off, we're going to talk about pythons here. Okay, so the main thing about pythons here compared to boas is that pythons are oviparous, meaning they lay eggs, and boas are ovoviviparous, meaning they give birth to live young. Pythons here come from typically the, what you would consider the old world, which would be Africa, Asia, Australia, those kind of places. That's not always constant, but it's pretty typical pythons. They also have a little bit of a different head structure than boas. Their, their skull is a little bit different, which would separate the two sub subgroups of boadoids. Okay, so what you're looking at there is obviously a python. Now under the python class, which is a very general class itself, but getting a little more specific, there are many thousands of hundreds of different species of pythons. This right here is a ball python, and you know the list goes on forever. There's things, Burmese pythons is another one. Just some common ones that you guys might know. And then even more specific, this is a piebald male ball python. So that's what you're looking at there. So moving on to the other side of the Boidae family, this is a boa. All right, that is what the boa. This is this is a boa, and there's pythons and there's boas, and the difference is mainly what makes a boa a boa and a python a python is the way that they give birth. These boas here give birth to live young, meaning the babies come out breathing. There is no incubation of eggs like you have to with pythons. The babies come out alive and breathing out of boas. They're ovoviparous. So that's the main difference. Boas are typically found in the New World, which would be over here in the Americas, but that's not always true, but it's typical. They diff have a different head structure than pythons also, like I mentioned, but the main difference you can just remember is the way they give birth. Okay, so just a little bit of an example here. The snake I'm holding out in front of you is a Kenyan sand boa, which puts it into the same family as the snake behind us there, which is a uh, boa constrictor. Now you see this snake right here is uh, two, three years old, and it is full grown. The one behind us isn't even a year old yet, so it's obviously not full grown. And you can see the size difference between them is incredible. They have so much related, yet they're so different. It, 
nature is just amazing. These are guys, these guys, their bodies are very, very, very similar. Just the way they they do what they with what they have, which would make them separate species of boas. Yet they're both boas. So you're looking at my green tree python right there, which is another species of python, just as another example while I talk here. So two other smaller groups of snakes are Viperidae and Elapidae. These are the venomous snakes. Viperidae are venomous snakes with hinged fangs, which means they can swivel back and forth in their mouth to do what they want with. And the other group, Elapidae, have fixed fangs so they can't move. So those are just two little subspecies of what you would put all the venomous snakes into. Okay, so like I mentioned earlier, there are so many different serpents that I'm gonna skip over a lot of them because they aren't really relevant because most of them aren't even in captivity. Um, so to keep things relevant to you guys, because I know most of you only have boas, pythons, and colubrids, that's all I'll talk about. So the last subspecies uh, I'm gonna go with talk about are the colubrids. Now this class is kind of just everything else that didn't fall into a category that I have previously talked about. I don't actually have one, a colubrid, but to give you guys an example, if you own a corn snake, you have a colubrid. Corn snakes are colubrids. Pretty much everything else that you know is not a python or boa, or venomous, then it's a colubrid. Now don't get me wrong, because I just said earlier that there are many, many other that are not colubrids, but generally, most in the pet industry that I'm talking about here, so don't get all snappy with me, because I know what I'm talking about. In the pet industry, normally, if it's not a python or a boa, then it's a colubrid, that's what I mean. Now, a big difference between pythons, boas, and colubrids that I find really interesting is that the boadoids, the pythons and the boas, are considered uh, primitive snakes. They're older than the colubrids, they're uh, more evolved than the colubrids, if you want to put it that, or you could consider them less evolved. It kind of depends on your standpoint on that. But because of this, boadoids like these pythons and boas have two lungs and colubrids have one single lung. Not all pythons and boas, both their lungs work, but they, they all have two lungs just like people and colubrids, they just have one single lung. And that's a pretty big difference. It doesn't affect them at all. They work the same, but it's just something that I found interesting. Okay, so before I start confusing you and myself, I'm just going to leave you off there. If you ever want to have a conversation with me about this, I'd be glad to talk to you about it. And so you can just PM me or leave a comment and I will get back to you. I promise. Just give me a bit of time. If you want to and you found that interesting, you can go on the internet and research it yourself. But I'm just going to leave you at that. And if you want to, me to summarize all that up so you can sound smart in front of your friends, the difference between snakes, how you can just remember this. Pythons, like a ball python, lay eggs. Boas, like a boa constrictor, give live birth. And then you can say, pretty much safely say that all the other snakes that your friend might have as a pet is probably a colubrid, or if it's a venomous snake, then you, you have a pretty cool friend. But um, colubrids have one lung, and these guys have two lungs. So. A lot of people just have the boas and the pythons, so laying eggs or not laying eggs, that is the big question.